Once exiled, now Corwin reigns as Amber's pro tempore ruler, inheriting the murderous rancor of his siblings along with the mantle of power, for there is no respite from familiar treachery as a traitor of the blood reveals to hostile demonic forces the feuding royal's most closely guarded secret, the ability to manipulate shadow. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum, I'm your host Liam aka Hembar, and today I'll be doing a spoiler-free review of Roger Zelazny's Sign of the Unicorn. Sign of the Unicorn is book three in the Chronicles of Amber. It was first published in 1975, and this is again three of five, so we are in the middle of the arc here. I don't have a ton of to say about this one, so it will be rather short. Um, essentially, as far as the first two books go, which there will be some spoilers, but I have done reviews for both of those, Corwin has achieved what he wanted, uh, sort of. Uh, things are a mess, though Eric is now dead, who seemed to be Corwin's chief rival to getting the crown of Amber, um, so Corwin now seems to be able to take the throne. Of course, there are problems with this, as essentially this whole book revolves around bickering with his siblings. It's very dialogue-driven because of that, um, which I thought honestly wasn't as exciting as the first couple books, for whatever reason. Um, but Zelazny does dialogue really well, so it's actually some of the best I've ever read. So, I mean, it's kind of equaled out here. Um, but again, the brothers and sisters of Amber are bickering and knifing each other in the back. Uh, literally, actually. So, um, there are a lot more mysteries here. Um, some are solved. Um, I honestly really love the multiverse we get to explore here. The places we get to visit are just awesome. And we do learn more about chaos here. Um, and we, we get to see that Corwin is causing his own problems. And this deals with the curse that Corwin gave to Amber in the first book. Um, it's also interesting that here Corwin is a suspect um, in one of his brother's deaths as well. Uh, I would say the ending actually has quite a cliffhanger. Quite a cliffhanger, uh, especially compared to the first two. Um, I thought it was really well done. Maybe want to get to the fourth and fifth books yet, but I don't have them physically, nor do I have them on audio, so I haven't read them yet, even though I'm recording this several weeks after um, finishing reading it. Um, but overall, I enjoyed this one a little less than books one and two, but I still quite enjoyed it. Um, though I will say I was actually really like extremely tired when I was listening to this, so that might have had something to do with my enjoyment of it. Um, but again, um, if you thought everything was a lie in book one, it's even more of a lie here. And interestingly enough, also compared to book ones and two, um, this one takes place over a day or two, uh, which is a short amount of time compared to books one and two. Also, there is less military campaigning as well, so definitely a different feel. It's definitely a murder mystery um, with everyone, you know, who committed the murder sitting in the rooms, like an Agatha Christie thing going on here. So, but I think it's done rather well. Uh, beyond that, I don't really have anything else to say besides that I enjoyed this, and I'm looking forward to getting to four and five at some point, um, whenever I can get a copy of that, either physically or on Audible. Um, so I can finish up this first arc of Amber. It's pretty exciting stuff, if I do say so myself. And I do. But you are listening to Liam's Lyceum. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.